Good morning, church family. To God be the glory. What a beautiful, wet day. We are starting for our fathers and those father figures and those mothers that are living as fathers in the life of their family. We greet you in the joy of Jesus Christ on this beautiful Father's Day Sunday morning. We're happy to have you with us. Thank you for choosing to spend a period of your day worshiping Jesus Christ with us. For some, this is a glad and easy celebration and remembrance. Oh, but people of God, there for others, it's a day mixed with sorrow and regrets and a re for a relationship that once was and now is gone or for a desired relationship that was never possessed. That makes worship easy for some and difficult for others. Fathers and father figures, today we lovingly remember that, that you were called to have the right tools. When you have the right tools, the work gets done more effi effi effect efficiently, I'm sorry, and with less frustration. The right tools are even more important when it comes to our worship life and our ongoing study of God's word. Men of God, fathers and father figures, we joyfully, oh church, we joyfully celebrate each of you today, your role in the life of family, but especially and more importantly, your vital role in the life of the church. We honor you. We honor you for every day and always with a spirit of profound and limitless respect. Amen. We're so grateful to have the preacher of the hour, my brother in Christ, Brother Doug Fitzgerald. Oh, my Lord, we're just going to hear from God today in a special and wonderful way. We have Miss Deanna with us who's going to lift us up in our spirit as, with, with music. And then we have topside there, the Toms. Happy Father's Day. Oh, I'm sorry, Brother Tom Kallenberg and Brother Mark Harris. Happy Father's Day to you both. And then Brother Gil Sheridan, our head usher, who's here to do anything that is possible to make your experience any more enjoyable. Church, we're so grateful to have our men in the house. We're so thankful for each and every one of you and all that you do and stand for in the life of family and especially of the church. So we invite you to get excited, to, to look around and just give a glance every now and then to the men in the house. And just give them a wink, it's okay. Give them a wink and just say, we're so glad, Mr. Leslie, so glad you are here. Amen, amen. So to, I am very glad. <laughs> we give God honor, praise, and glory as Miss Deanna will center us for our worship experience. Amen. able for our call to worship. Our relationship with our fathers are complicated. Some of, 
Some of our dads are here. Some were never here. All of us are shaped by the relationship or lack of relationship with our fathers. our prayer of confession in unison. Patient God, And with that, our assurance of forgiveness tells us the Lord is our Heavenly Father, compassionate and merciful, filled with endless love. God is not easily angered, nor does God remain angry forever. God does not treat us as our sin deserved, thank you, Jesus, or punish us as harshly as God could. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so strong is God's love towards each of us. And as far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sins from us. Let us go, let go of your fears and doubts. God pours God's love on you, in you, and through you to others. Be at peace. Our opening hymn is Sanctuary. We're going to sing that through twice. Amen. scripture is found from in 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the 14th through the 16th verse, and verses 18 through 21. In the reading, we are doing the Good News reading version. Uh, Brother Doug will be taking it from our Bible, the New Revised Standard Version, but we will read that together. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, illumine this sacred scripture. We pray that our minds may be open to receive your holy word, our hearts taught to love it, our wills strengthened to obey it. Through Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. All together, our scripture reading. I am not telling you.
word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in the joy of Jesus Christ. I think you understand that uh, I'm going to give the sermon today, and I'm not doing this necessarily because I think that I have any special expertise or talent or knowledge about being a father. We know that pastor asked me to do this, so (laughs) that being said, I'm doing it. Um, And in fact, I would say that... um, as I reflect on my approach to fatherhood, I I think I'm a very reactive person when it's come to fatherhood. To me, I remember being an 18 year old kid, barely uh, able to like figure out how the world works and how do you relate to your friends and your family and your teachers and all of these people and and not doing a very good job of it because I was an 18 year old kid. Um, And then one day you find yourself um, with a wife and kids and you're driving up north to the north woods of Wisconsin where you've rented a rickety shack on the lake, which is what young families do. And uh, you you arrive at this wonderful place where you're going to spend your vacation and the kids jump out of the car and run into the cottage with your wife and you know there I am I'm going to unload the car because what do fathers do you load the car you unload the car and before I can get started on that out come in a great commotion my wife and my sons uh, because there's a mouse in this cottage okay and it becomes clear to me that it is my job to get rid of the mouse not because I have any aptitude or experience or knowledge about mousing, but because I'm the dad, I'm the father, and this, the job just gets defined by whatever happens today. So my experience in fathering was always just reacting to whatever came up and whatever the job was at that moment that day, um, you handle it. And as I went through this, I found myself constantly repeating in my life, you know, I don't remember my father ever having to do this. So, and after about 100, 200, 700 times of saying this to myself, I started to realize I don't really think my father had that much better a deal than I had. And it probably was worse because I was the middle child of four children. So if my two kids were this, that had to be this. So I clearly was wrong if I believed my father had an easy ride. And it dawned on me that it was probably just that I wasn't paying attention. And, and then my father did do all these things as a father, but I was a kid. I had my heads in the clouds, and I wasn't paying attention and doing my thing and sorting it out. And so you know, this really was about um, my paying attention to what my father was doing and was I picking up the life lessons and the experience that I would need to go forward. And I'm reacting so much because I wasn't paying attention. Um, And that brings me to the reading for today. And as pastor said, I uh, picked up the, the, uh, the, um, the new revised version from the pews and was reading it. So the language is a little different on this point. I'm going to read through it with you. Um, And so 1 Corinthians 4.14 says, I am not writing this to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you might have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. Indeed, in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. I appeal to you, then be imitators of me. For this reason, I sent you Timothy, who is my beloved and faithful child in the Lord to remind you of ways in Christ Jesus as I teach them everywhere in every church. And as I reflect on that passage, um, Paul is treating the church as a family and he says you have guides, but you also have fathers. So the job of father carries with it a lot more than simply being a guide in the church. So there's a different level of commitment. It's a different job. And the 
uh, what Paul is saying is basically pay attention because he's urging the church to imitate those people who take on the role of being a father in the church. And he's saying not just generally do it, he's pointing, he's going to name names and he's going to say Timothy there. That, you know, that is somebody I think fills this role. Watch him and see him reflect the way of Christ. And in the young church, I think there may not have been as many people to fill this role as fathers. And, you know, we today in a much more mature church, we're here at Fifth Avenue, and things are a little bit different. Um, And since Paul was bold enough to name names, I thought I would follow in his footsteps, even though it's a little treacherous, because I know I won't name everybody and I'll leave someone out, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's a little tricky. But I think it is good since I spent so much time not paying attention to my father and learning any lessons. I do think I learned the lesson of paying attention. So um, I noticed that here at Fifth Avenue, we do have a lot of fathers in the, in the way that Paul was talking about it, guides as how we are to have our way in Christ. So if I'm going to name some names, I'm going to start as Pastor has done repeatedly talking about the two Toms. So we have Tom Kallenberg and Tom Latham. They are not something we can see, but they have a great impact on every worship experience we have, taking care of all the tech. Those of you on the days you can't be here or if you can't be here every day, they're making sure that this service can be seen. And that is an enormous Uh, role that they take on to handle all that tech stuff that I couldn't begin to understand. Um, Pastor also mentions uh, Gil Sheridan. He's in the back every day. He's there to make the worship experience better. If you uh, don't have a need, you're not going to notice Gil so much, but if you do, he's always there waiting. Um, And, you know, there are lots of other people who are kind of in the back quietly doing the job. Um, I'd point out Roger Rohde, who's here, and uh, another quiet force, just always there with us, um, with his love of God and bringing that to us. Um, Another person always who strikes me is Dave Bertelson. Um, Dave does the impossible for, you know, just about every Sunday, and I'm not just saying because of his musical talent, which, again, I don't have, But it's the fact that he brings together a group of people all the time, and it's a ministry that we get to enjoy, but he's doing the work of bringing those people together and keeping that going and and gives us such amazing uh, music to work with. Lots of other people are here in this church doing things. Uh, Mark Harris has jumped in today, and he's Uh, behind the console up in the balcony, but Mark is just somebody who knows how to do things. He knows how to fix things. He knows how to make things happen, and he's always there ready to jump in and do those things, um, resourceful and providing us things. Um, Ed Fowle, not here today, but Ed spent years as a trustee of this church and committed a lot of time and energy and has shared with us Uh, his vision and his focus on making sure our budgets are good and the checkbook balances and and giving us that focus which every family needs and our church family also needs that as well. Um, Talking about our trustees, uh, Brett Barnett is one of our trustees. Um, He stepped forward and said that he would be a trustee for this church and he is frankly fearless the way he throws himself into the next challenge and there are so many and they just keep coming and Brett is on he's unfazed and he just keeps going um Dean is our other trustee and he uh, brings such practical knowledge and all of his gifts as well um Bob Krell has been an amazing influence on me. Bob's always been the father figure of this church as a lay leader for so many years. And not just that, he was the guy who would never hesitate to step up and say, this is what you're going to do. 
you're, you're, there's like a pancake back breakfast the men are doing, and you're going to be there. Um, and uh, just being that consummate leader in our church, um, you know, owe a lot to Bob as one of the fathers of our church. I have to mention some of the people who are no longer with us. Um, great leaders of this church who filled that role of father, Alan Kikafer, uh, John Roth, Ralph Hensel. These were all uh, people who took on that role. They volunteered, they, they were leaders, and they were a guide to us even when they weren't actually working. So this church is blessed with so many people. And uh, there are two reasons I'm going to stop at this point. One, there are so many people I could just keep going. And the second is that um, my sons always point out to me that I talk for too long. And so uh, for those two reasons, I'm going to stop. So if I have not mentioned anybody... Um, my apologies for that. Um, so we're recognizing some of these people because it's Father's Day, and we want to say thank you to all those people who are fathers for this church and this church community. Um, Paul's ultimate message is to pay attention every day. Uh, we're saying thank you today because it's Father's Day, but also there is we're, we're left with this admonition to pay attention as these fathers of our church on a daily basis are giving of their talents and uh, making contributions uh, so that this church can move forward in its way with Christ. Oh, don't do that. Amen, Brother Doug. Okay, you can always have you here. You know he is Methodist, right? <laughs> he thinks he's Catholic, but you know he is very Methodist. <laughs> he is very Methodist. To God be the glory. We thank Brother Doug for the message, and, and what better way to celebrate our fathers than through the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through his holy communion. And our fathers are so important to showing us how to love, how to forgive, how to be the example to others. It is a bittersweet. This is our last communion celebration together. brings a lot of emotions to mind. How we have broken the body of Christ and we have shared his precious blood as people of God. So I extend to you my once again humble appreciation for all of you, for all that you do. Our fathers, our mothers, those in between, those uncles and aunts, those cousins, all the many parts that make up the one body that is church. So we come together on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday of Father's Day, and we come to the table that is set for all because all are truly welcome to come. God of life, you shared your peace with us when you gathered and formed us from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into us. But life with you was not enough for us. Even in our rebellion, you clothe us and provide a way in the world. We are thankful that you continue to seek us even in our wandering ways. Jesus, Prince of Peace, you separated us from our sin in a way we never could, in a way we never can. You were a vessel of peace in a world that did not welcome you, but you pers persevered in love in the face of hatred. You taught us that forgiveness is impossible even in the midst of extreme suffering. We are thankful that you continue to love us even in our unrepentant ways. Holy Spirit, 
You hold peace within us despite our circumstances. You tend to the deepest parts of our inmost being, nurturing peace so that it may grow. You lead us in paths of righteousness, showing us the way to bear love to the world. When hatred speaks its convincing lies, you show us the truth. We are thankful that you continue to sanctify us, even in our careworn ways, so that we may become instruments of peace, able to sow love so that hatred does not take root. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would move in this place today. May our meager offering of bread and cup become our communion with the triune God and one another. May peace and love abound in us and through us. In the certain hope that love overcomes all, we join our voices to pray together, each of us using the words we find most familiar saying, Our Father, In the face of betrayal and impending death, people of God, Jesus ate one final meal with his disciples. As he did so, he broke the bread, gave thanks, and then offered it to each, saying, take, eat, this is my body, broken, broken for each of you. Likewise, he took the precious cup, gave thanks to God for it, gave it to them, and said, take, drink, this is my blood shed for each of you. Drink it in remembrance of me. The broken body and the shed blood are a continuation of God's covenant of peace with each of us. They are also the signs of a new covenant, a covenant where love is the rule and hatred can be overcome. Every time we share this precious meal, we proclaim the triumph of peace and love until the day when hatred is gone forever. All are welcome. All has been prepared. Come, come, siblings of Christ, and eat as we share in the peace of God. We invite our communion stewards to come forward as we share this wonderful table together. Deanna, the precious body of your Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Brother Doug, broken for you on Calvary's cross. Miss Joanna, he said, feast on me with thanksgiving. After supper, he took the cup. He said, drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. Your sins are forgiven. the table is set all are welcome you may come
join me for the prayer after communion. Holy God, the bread and the cup reminds us how good you are. You nourish us in our journey of faith, reminding us that you are always with us as we journey through, prepare us to hear your call. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. As we receive your peace, may we see where we can share it with others. Guide us in our words and actions. For there is hatred, let us sow love. We give you thanks for who you are and the blessings of being called your people. Amen. Amen. On this Father's Day, the fathers and father figures have received a gift. But the Lord said to him, Go for this man is my chosen instrument to take my name to Gentiles, kings, and Israelites. Men, if women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Amen? Amen, Amen now. Because we're getting very, very good at doing the stuff ourselves, so you need to just keep up with that, okay? Men of God, you are called to be one of God's most useful tools. In God's great and unfathomable mercy, God has chosen to use sinners like you as tools in God's hands. Like a patient father allowing a toddler to help him with a project, our Heavenly Father kindly wills you blood-bought rebels to, God, to fulfill God's purposes. Were it up to us, God would use angels or just snap God's fingers and have it done. Yet in God's infinite wisdom, God selects what seems to be the unlikable tool in the box, knowing that each of you, men of God, are exactly the right tool. So if you look in your bag, you see you have a multi-tool. The hammer. Be consistent. You can't drive a nail into a two-by-four with one blow. You've got to strike the nail repeatedly until the force eventually drives the nail in. The screwdriver. Some fathers are wound way too tight. Hallelujah. All stressed out, grumpy, tired, serious all the time. You need to be loosened up or or bring unity and harmony to very different things by bringing them, as the, as the screwdriver does, closer together. The adjustable wrench. Fathers need to be adjustable and flexible in the situations that arise. Pliers. Every toolbox needs some pliers to hold things together. So a father needs to hold things together when it appears everyone else seems to be losing their grip. Tape measure, build with integrity. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. God's word is your tape measure. You'll never measure up if you take your measurements from the standards of the world around you, but from the standards of Jesus Christ. The level. Fathers need to walk on level path as an example, as well as keep a level head. Levels are used to determine whether something is true as it ought to be. The knife, razor sharp blade. Dull knives are like bad friends. They're inconsistent, they cut roughly, and they often do more harm than good. God's word is alive and powerful. It is sharper than a double-edged sword. God's word can cut through our spirits and souls and through our joints and marrow until it discovers the desired thoughts of our hearts. Hebrews 4 and 12. The file is used to rough out those, smooth out those rough edges. And then there's a magnet. Fathers and father figures, are you a magnet? A magnet is an object that draws and holds other objects disposed towards each other through attraction. By living like Jesus, you will draw people to Jesus. Love and commitment. If we're walking in the path of righteousness, loving and being committed to Jesus, our light 
should be getting brighter each day. Not easier, church. Not easier, men. Challenging, exciting, and rewarding is the journey. And who else would not give you chocolate except me? Kit Kat. Spend personal time with Jesus, asking for his power and strength to lighten the load. Everybody needs a break. Everybody needs a Kit Kat. Trying to do a job without the right tools, though, people of God, usually results in frustration. God, of course, has many more tools than what you just have on your, in your multi-tool kit and then what I can go through this morning. God uses them to chip away at our sinful flesh and shape us into the image of Christ. In fact, we learn in Romans 8 that all things can be used this way. People of God, we must learn to trust that God will always use the right tools. Amen? God be with you. Oh, come on, church. Okay? God be with you. Oh, let us greet each other on this Father's Day just to say we love our men and those father figures in our worship experience this morning. Come on, stand and greet each other. joy we say our offertory prayer to our God, eternal God. Closing him, spirit song.
The Lord God Almighty is our Father. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, is among us. To God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow. Elephant in the room. <laughs> Two more weeks. What a wonderful way to celebrate you through the beauty of Holy Communion. I thank you so much as always, always, always on my, on my lips and in my heart my gratitude to each and every one of you. So thank you so much for being with us this morning. My brother Doug, I just cannot thank him enough for saying yes as I asked him to celebrate fathers, the men of this church, the wonderful, beautiful men of this church that give so much to showing us the love and the light of Jesus Christ in everything they do and say. So thank each one of you. On behalf of Brother Martin, he extends his love to you as well. The cancer has mastitized, and we are going through another journey. So we're going to be seeing Freighter now to see what we can do. But I serve a God that is able I'm not defeated, and Brother Martin's not defeated, but it was a little kick in the stomach <laughs> to get a new diagnosis. So continue to pray for us. Continue to hold us in your, in your hearts as we continue to move forward in the calling that God has placed into each of our lives. May God, our glorious Father, open the eyes of your heart so that you might see the hope of, to which God is calling you, the richness of the inheritance God has prepared for you, and the power that is at work among you. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers and father figures, to our mothers who are in the role of fathers as well. Brother Doug. Now unto him who keeps us from falling, unto him who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. May God's grace rest, rule, and abide, and be with you now, his people. And we can say on this beautiful Father's Day, amen, 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 amen. and amen.